The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. I do want to move on to our next question, which is an email from Diana who wrote us after Mohs surgery for basal cell carcinoma. She wrote, I now have a gaping wound and have had severe headaches since the surgery. Please help. I need someone who can fix this hole in my head and help with the headaches. Thankfully, we had just the person to examine, Diana our very own Dr. Batra. In basal cell carcinoma, the single most common type of cancer in the entire United States, over three million diagnosed each year, and usually comes up as a pearly crusted spot, just not healing, pimple or sore that just never goes away. And Mohs surgery referred to in the question is a procedure we do in the office under local anesthetic, and we take a very narrow edge around what's clinically visible of the tumor, and we actually process it right there in the office, look under the microscope, and make sure that the periphery and the base are all clear. So it's basically just surgery done in stages to make sure the tumor is completely out. 99 plus percent cure rate for a primary tumor like this, 94 percent cure rate for a recurrent tumor. So really kind of the gold standard for something like what Diana had on the face, any sort of aggressive or recurrent tumor. And, and the big advantage being that you're, you want to remove all of the tumor, but you don't want to remove more than you need to remove, Absolutely. especially on the face because it, it can cause deformity, it can be more difficult to, to heal properly, take longer to heal, leave more scars. So all reasons why Mohs surgery is sort of the gold standard for basal cells on the face. Yeah, so. And Diana is here with us today and I know you, that you had the opportunity to to examine Diana. I did, and so I think with most surgery, what we didn't mention is we actually map out the tumor and take out what needs to go, and then usually suture it up right then and there once we know the tumor is out. Now I know Diana, when you wrote into the show, you work we are make your living by public speaking and you were really worried about the appearance of the spot because as you described it, it was a hole in your head. Mm -hmm. So we brought you into the office, <laughs> took a look, wanted to make sure it wasn't infected. Mm -hmm. So the tape rolling in the background with all the crusting was Diana's wound when I saw her in my office, mm -hmm. uh, which was shortly after your surgery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I first want to say thank you, Dr. Batra, because after <laughs> seeing you, uh, I was so relieved, and it just, it was, I'm so grateful to you. Uh, I feel so much better, and I'm healing, and I understand now more of this process, and it's very scary when you are diagnosed with something like this. So I, I you know, the word cancer is a scary thing. And so, and Mohs, I didn't know what that was. And then the wound was, <laughs> it's scary to have a hole in your head. So thank you so much for cleaning it and taking care of it. It's my pleasure. Well, and, and most surgeons prefer to close this at the time of mm -hmm. the Mohs excision, correct? Right, and so I think Diana's case, you're a perfect example of really the importance of communication about post-operative care. So her wound actually was closed, but I think a lot of us still think of that old adage where you want a wound to get crusty and scabbed and that's somehow going to help the wound healing. And actually research about wound healing has completely debunked that. And so I always tell my patients, one of the most important things you should do is just gently clean your wound, keep ointment on it, grease the path for those cells to come in and heal the wound. So for Diana, what we really did was we just talked about how to clean it, how to prevent infection. We cleaned off some of the crusting and scabbing that was really acting as almost like a roadblock for those cells that need to come in and seal the wound up for you. So we took some before after photos of just what a difference it can make between allowing a a wound to get crusted and scabbed versus just very gently taking that off so that the cells have a nice clean canvas to go in and seal the wound. And one of the most lovely things too is that the skin heals well. If you take care of it, you protect it from the sun, you keep a nice heavy ointment on it, it's so forgiving and it's going to heal beautifully. Now Diana, I know you also we talked about this briefly, but I'd love it if you could share some of your thoughts about this experience with the diagnosis and what you've learned about it since then. Well, what I've learned, uh, first of all, I'm getting rid of my tanning bed that I've had, <laughs> uh, that I've had since the I 80s. I think I um, that. <laughs> uh, I've tanned in a tanning bed with 
special browning bulbs that would supposedly <laughs> be okay for tanning. And I, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, I realized I, I grew up in the sun. I've always been in the sun. Uh, I'm now using the word sun protection and just really uh, caring about my skin and how important it is to my overall health.